This week, we're discussing a wooden satellite, TCL's next paper 14, the Samsung Galaxy Book 4, Oppo's Airglass 3 XR prototype, the Galaxy Ring, the Honor Pad 9, and the consistency of my sputum. Welcome to the Tech Alex Podcast. I am Gareth, your host, and this is Ted, your co-host. Hiya, Ted. Hello, Gareth. How lovely to speak with you again on this Sunday morning. Sunny and bright as it is in North Wales. Actually, it's funny, it's gone cold the last few days. They did say it was going to, but during the night it's like down to freezing. I was quite surprised. It's March now. I was expecting to be sweltering by now. What's it like over there? It, it's, it's quite tranquil. The sun is out. The blue skies are... Are, are well blue because that's all they can be and uh, I did notice last night it was quite warm when I, I was visiting my mother I walked out and it was pleasant outside ah. it wasn't cold at all yeah, right. um, but yes I am aware that the temperatures are going to drop I don't know why I'm talking like it's Jack and Ori or something like that the temperatures are going to drop and it's all going to go to shit that's what's going to happen um, yes so apologies folks um, I'm not a hundred percent at the moment you might have just uh, realised that I don't normally sound this sexy, but that's because I'm completely full of sputum and mucus. Uh, whereas Ted, um, you're going to have to suffer through me being full of sputum and mucus. It's okay. Do you have any ailments of your own? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> oh, um, I talked about those on the um, on the the PSC last night, so I won't repeat it all. But um, yes, but we have discovered a way of you muting yourself, so we'll expect you to do that. <laughs> well, yes, I'll I'll try as much as I can to mute myself, um, but there might be the odd little uh, snortle or choke or cough or something like that that get, that's, gets emanated from me because it seems to be as soon as I finish talking, I've I've rattled something that's caused annoyance at the back of my throat. But you know we're dedicated hardcore broadcasters, podcasters here, so we're here choking just so that Cho- you don't have to listen to your loved ones. Choking might be the best thing for you, frankly. I, I, I fully agree, yeah, I'll put everyone out of my misery. Yes. Oh dear, my, my levels are not very high. One, two, hopefully it's all right. Um, yes, so <laughs> we've got a bit of feedback before we go on from the group, as always. Ian Barton has been talking about libation. I think we spoke about this probably before, ages and ages ago, or maybe it was on whatever works, I can't remember. Anyway, downloading and decrypting audiobooks he's talking about. Um, he's got a lot of audiobooks and he wanted to download them, and he found this um, thing called libation, which is a program which you can grab from GitHub, um, and you can install it on most operating system systems. Um, Ian, as we know, dabbles with um, Linux and stuff, so it works there as well. Um, it's got all sorts of options and filtering stuff and blah de blah de blah. You can then download your purchased Audible books in, mm. to your computer and then save them as um, MP3s or whatever you want to do. Um, and I have actually done this in the past. I had a bunch of audiobooks, and I didn't want to lose them if, in case Audible went tits up at some point, which which seems unlikely, but anything can happen. Um, and also, you don't have to kind of download them every time you change a phone or device or whatever. You've got them all on your computer. You just copy the MP3s across, and that's what I do now. So those audiobooks are all saved and um, I used a similar tool. It wasn't libation, but it was something very similar, and I got it across. The 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 the, the sticking point, though, uh, as I was saying to Ian, comes with Google Play Books. So not Audible, but Google Play Books, which I've bought audio a bunch of audio books from there too. And you can't, I I couldn't find any tools at all to do this with for Google Play Books. So I ended up <laughs> using my Zoom recorder with a cable. <laughs> I, I I had a phone. I down so I had all the 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 the, the um, Google Play Book audio. Go, play books audiobooks on the phone the phone had a 3.5 millimeter jack on it and i coupled that up with my zoom recorder and in real time i recorded it on the zoom <laughs> oh my so it took about i don't know two weeks to get all the all the books across but i've done it and it's there and it's worked but yes for audible um, ian's talking about is libation did you do it properly and, and record it straight to cassette tape 
<laughs> it's really quite good though to know that I've got them all. And if I if I ever buy a new one, I know exactly how to do it. As does Ian. See, I'd love to be able to find my. Um, I know my dad had a bunch of audio books on cassette because he used to listen to them in the car on the way into work and things on the commute. I can't find them anywhere, but I'm sure he's got crap books like well, fun ones like Hitchhiker's Guide or something like that. But um, I just they used to come out and they would they would be as about as bland as you could get for audiobooks but now they're they've they sort of pumped in a bit more pizzazz to it and uh they have uh you know uh actors and things like that portraying various different roles and things it's almost more like a, a wee bit more theatrical than anything else and i i do quite like that yeah uh, yeah hmm. but i'm i'm using a thing called uh audio bookshelf on my Synology which organises all of my audiobooks. I've only just started using it and I haven't quite worked out if it if it does what Ian's mentioning there uh, to be able to go and get my ones from Audible because right. sort of, I'll, I'll deal with those later on but yeah. they're all kind of nicely there and they're all nicely formatted and goes and it, it works out which version it is you have of the audiobook because say for example where there's James Bond they've been recorded multiple times by various different people over the years and it goes and gets the correct information for you, and then you can you can convert it from MP3 if you've got maybe twelve MP3s or something into one big M4B. Is it that that or M4As or M4Bs? Um, so it can remember your position and all that depending on on what app you're using to listen to back to it. Okay. So uh, yeah, I've got a I've got a player called um, a Smart Audio Book hmm. Player. Smart audio book player, and that's really clever. Um, I, I, I bought it because it's worked so well, and that even takes your core MP3 from recording it from um, from my Zoom recorder, and it works out where the chapters are. It's just brilliant. The, the developer of yes. that has done it really well. I I actually use the same oh right uh, thing as well oh, okay. because I think it works with with my Synology, so I can go and sort of automatically if i decide i want to listen to this particular book it'll just bring it over and right. it'll sit there for me to be able to use it excellent it's great yeah yeah good stuff audiobooks seem to be becoming more and more popular and yeah. I'm, I'm they do I, I just don't quite understand why people are have taken this long to take to them yeah, yeah. or they're kind of coming back i suppose because audiobooks were out there Largely for people with disabilities, I think, in the libraries, you know, a couple of decades mm. ago. And a bit like film cameras and, and cassette players and vinyl. Things just go round in in circles, don't they? And kind of, I'm sure that the next thing will be something else we used to use and didn't think would come back. Yeah, I've got a copy of, um, I think it's the Stainless Steel Rat, one of those uh, one adventure of those that that series of books on i it might be vinyl somewhere i think it is vinyl but i can't find it and it's it's frustrating me because the artwork was terrific on it right um and i'd just love to be able to dig it out again uh, aj santos has written in about voyager one and how its future looks somewhat uncertain voyager one is the farthest any human object has ever gone from earth it's now over 15 billion miles from our planet <laughs> flying through interstellar space since its launch back in august of 1977 the spacecraft has remained in contact with earth but over the last several months that communication has become nonsensical are we about to lose the second longest operating spacecraft in human history well that's a it's a very interesting little article and uh, i've been following some various or various different channels on youtube that looks at voyager one and some of the things that it has managed to do and how they're prolonging its life um and it, it's it's fascinating how how actually how much they can actually get out of this this satellite so far away and uh they think that uh various different sort of blasts of radiation and things like that has maybe shorted out some of the chips and things happened a couple of years ago i think there was a there was an issue where there was some sort of jolt that caused one of the chips to short out or something to that effect and, and it started uh, sending back garbage messaging but they managed to fix it 
this far away wow. by turning off one particular thing and rerouting the stuff through somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, and the, it doesn't look like they can do it this time around. But, you know, once you've you've headed out beyond our solar system, you know, that, that we suspect what might be out there. But, you know, this is where science constantly gets... Um, pointed out as being unreliable because we're only guessing and something else just comes into play that we'd never imagined could possibly be there you know it could be full of milk and now there's milk all through the systems and it's not working properly it's 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 crazy and you know th those two probes have really outlasted their their usefulness to be honest um and every Every bit of information that we get out of them now is just an absolute bonus. And my hat is off to the, the, the folks at NASA who created these two probes because they are just phenomenal. You did a little bit of the maths, didn't you, before that? Uh, oh, oh yeah, before as we started to the show. how fast, how fast, uh, how fast it must be going. Um, it, it left in August 77 and it's now 15 billion miles away. And I reckon it must be flying at about 40,000 miles an hour. Um, so, well, you know, on average, presumably it speeds up and slows down to some degree, depending on what gravitational stuff is going on. But, you know... It's, and traffic and things like that. <laughs> yeah, how many buses are there, are in the way. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's it's phenomenal to think about these things, isn't it? The uh, Anyone that's kind of of any scientific mind at all, to just think, just sit and think about 15 billion miles and, and how far away that is and, and actually how close it still is to us, really, after 40, what is it, 47 years or something? Seven years, yeah. Seven. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, thinking about space just blows one's mind, which is why a lot of people like to do it, I suppose, because it's, it's, it's really mind-blowing. <laughs> it is, yeah. And then you, you, you think about how space actually works and how our solar system is actually, you know, plummeting through the universe, just zooming through yeah. at, at a ridiculous speed. And then this probe is actually going the other way, kind of out the back of it. So yeah, yeah. you know, at some point it's it's gonna it's gonna be left behind, way behind, as we just continually hurtle through through the universe. It's it is it's yeah. it's mystifying. So and I understand how wonderful it is for kids. I can see why people are drawn to these kind of sci-fi films and and sci-fi TV shows, and you know because quite often they do. I mean, they of course they they play with the truth, but quite often they reflect facts about the universe and where we are and how long it. For example, how long it would take in real terms for the human race to get to anywhere else that's um, habitable. And you think, good grief, that it's just never going to happen. And um, yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, I, 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 like many people listening to this show probably, um, and yourself, find the whole thing just fascinating and mind-boggling. Yeah. And whenever uh, Interstellar came out, I remember having a conversation with some of my friends down at the pub. And it, it was you could see the realization in their faces that something like Star Wars or Star Trek or Firefly can't actually really happen in 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 the terms that we grasp. Where you know because of interstellar traveling, you know time speeds up and slows down in ridiculous ways. That you, I, I think I'm just assuming that everyone listening to this has seen Interstellar, but there's a, a point where they they go to a particular planet where I think it's something like ten minutes on that planet is seven years back home, yeah. um, and they're there for I don't know half an hour or something like that, and they come out and it's like, well, everyone we knew at home was dead, yeah, <laughs> or something yeah. like that. It's like wow, and then whenever you you actually think this is this is scientifically correct. So we can't all be like Star Wars where we're all zipping around in ships all trying to be Han Solo being cool because, you know, once you meet someone, you'll probably never meet them again mm -hmm. because you'll you'll do the Kessel Run and, and head over there and have to deliver a load of tribbles to uh, SETI Alpha 6. Um, and whenever you drop them off, SETI Alpha 6 
time is, you know, three centuries is two days or something like that. And whenever you leave again, everybody you know is dead. Yeah. You're like, right, okay. So, hmm, okay. Let's go back to where you get the Tribbles from. Tribbles are us. And is that store even still there? No, it's not. Oh, right, okay. So how are we going to... How are we going to be traveling around the universe with different bits of stock? Sorry, I'm, I'm starting to wrap No, no, up. no. <laughs> I think that reflects how fascinating most of our audience and us are with this whole topic. And it, and it really, and that's why on the projector room MeWe group, a lot of the people that write in there are writing about sci-fi TV shows and sci-fi films. And it is, and I do as well. It's, it's just fascinating. And when that's done well, it's really, really good. Um, yeah. But yeah. Right. Well, we'll move on because um, I, before we start into the news and things like that, I wanted to kind of address something that we, we I think we sort of I, I've, I've wanted to talk about on the last couple of shows, but never quite got around to it. And I've remembered <laughs> the, the, on this show uh, and I thought I'd throw in a little bit of banter section where we have a wee chat about what exactly is happening uh, in the world of streaming at the moment, um, because there's there's an awful lot of conversation going on and. If you talk to anyone on the street, they will be airing some sort of grumble or annoyance about streaming um, and how they're, they're subscribed to Netflix or subscribed to Amazon Prime or Disney Plus or whatever. And they don't either feel that they're getting their money's worth. Um, they they like the idea that uh, of having a library that's there. But how things have changed over the years and how people are talking about... Well, we did the whole cord cutting thing where we cut off our cable providers and our satellite providers and, and uh, the big Sky TV packages and things were all being cut off because they were getting too expensive. And now all these streaming channels, whenever you want to have them all so that you're not missing something, a bit like whenever you had TV channels, you know, BBC 1, 2, 3, and, or 1, 2... ITV, Channel 4 and Channel 5, back in those days. That's kind of the way we still see things. Being able to have them all and being able to flick over onto another channel and watch the show that everybody's talking about. But you have to take out a subscription for that. And that's that's expensive. And I, I sat down and I had a look at, at what I actually use and what I don't use. And I'm, I, I've always been a, a big advocator of, uh, of physical media. I do... I, I always push physical media and I think people are starting to come back around now that they've kind of got rid of their whole CD collection and DVD collection and uh, they're, they're wanting to buy things back and realising, oh hang on a second, this isn't available anymore or this is really expensive to buy, even if it's a dirt cheap DVD um, like the, I, I reviewed a, a film on, on GarethMiles.com the other day um, just called Deadly Impact that I used to have on mm-hmm. VHS and I went and tracked it down on DVD and it's it's quite available, you can buy it from all different sources, but it's stupidly expensive, you can go on to Amazon and buy you can pay anywhere between £25 and £37 for what used to be a £1 bargain bin DVD and that's because, you know, it's getting harder and harder to find. Most people have gotten rid of them. I imagine the amount of DVDs that have gone to landfill uh, as the streaming uh, the streaming thing came in and, and became the must-have and, and people just got rid of, uh, reclaimed the space in their living room, their shelves, as, as they got rid of all their movies and just dumped them all or sold them on eBay and collectors have picked them all up and are now able to sell them back at profit or whatever. But I I calculated I have Netflix and I have the Ultra HD of Netflix and then I've got the £5 add-on for my mother and I've got the £5 add-on for my daughter so that they can watch it. So Netflix is £27 a month. Like, wow. Then Amazon Prime and all of their bad moves that they've made recently um i buy that every year and in june i'll be they'll be asking me to resurrect my my uh my yearly subscription which is something like 95 pounds but that 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 only gets me now what is essentially the basic amazon prime yeah um and that, that i will have to pay extra in order to use some of the hardware features on my television so 
you know, my my 4K TV has Dolby Atmos and HDR and all that built into an HDR10. If I want to be able to use that on Amazon Prime, I have to then pay them an extra three pounds a month on top of my 95 pounds a year. Um, and also, the I I still get adverts. Um, they're getting rid of freebie altogether, so they'll yeah. they'll they'll still have ads in. TV shows that you're watching on Amazon Prime or or movies or whatever, um, unless you pay that extra three pounds, but you'll still have adverts even if you do pay that three pounds for other Amazon products. So you're you're not getting away from adverts altogether, which is a real swizz. And then you calculate what actually you get from Amazon Prime um, to make it worthwhile, and you get Amazon Music um, included, which is kind of their shuffle system. It's not actually you know, anything that, that can really go up against YouTube music or Spotify by taking out an individual uh, subscription to that. Uh, there's Amazon Photos, which is useful for backing up all your photos, but ultimately you can do better than having to pay a monthly subscription for that. Um, you get Amazon Gaming, which is getting progressively worse as they seem to be pushing people toward having stuff for Amazon Luna, which is their streaming gaming software. Um, there's next day delivery, which in Northern Ireland is a complete and utter joke. That's, that's um, not a joke here. I have to say that uh, some people think that the next day delivery, the prime delivery, is worth it without all, and all the other mm-hmm. stuff is a complete bonus. Yeah, every now and again, I'll get something that surprises me. If I order something on a Saturday morning, I'll get a notification that it's going to be delivered on the Sunday. It's like brilliant. But I at last Saturday, I ran out of cat food for the cats. I don't eat cat food myself or the hedgehogs. They don't eat cat food either. Um, (laughs) But I ordered it on the Saturday and it's going to be delivered today. That was last Saturday. That took over a week for the next day delivery to arrive. That's a Northern Ireland thing though. To be fair, that doesn't reflect the, the position in this country. I can't remember the last time I ordered anything from Amazon and it didn't come next day. Yeah. So it, it, it's a, it's really crappy to expect me to have to pay the same as the mainland yeah. uh, for such a substandard. And even at that, there's there's been so many occasions where something hasn't actually arrived. I remember in COVID ordering toilet paper and it was going to be delivered. And about two hours before it was delivered, oh, it got lost. And I think the driver just went, no, I'm going to hold on to this toilet paper because toilet paper is really difficult to get. It's like, what? <laughs> And I ended up having to pay extra because the that was there they do their subscribe and save thing where you have five things. Mm. That was thing number five. The other four things were delivered, but that was thing number five. So they ended up billing me for the the fifteen percent that I was saving off the five things. That's a, that's so I had to get that, that's <laughs> I had a, to give them money. That's another bad example though, because in COVID nobody could get toilet roll, so <laughs> You're, you're making your case fit your... Uh, what's it here? I can't think of the phrase. Well... You're making your it, it, There's other things as well. Case. <laughs> <laughs> well, batteries, okay? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I'm picking banks. up... <laughs> yeah. I have a burglar alarm system in my house that uses those little... Um, what are they? C... Uh, CR123As. You know the wee stubby AA batteries that they use for camera flashes? Camera batteries, I think both people call them. Uh, They're a wee lithium battery that can't be delivered to Northern Ireland Mm -hmm. through Amazon. And I have no option. You know, I can't say to them, send it by ship. I'll pay a little bit extra. Take it outside of the free delivery from Amazon Prime. I have no option to be able to get those shipped to me through Amazon. This, this, I have this, this to go elsewhere. This is to sound like a, a rant about Northern Ireland and not about the, <laughs> the services. I'm sure Amazon would love to give you next day delivery on batteries, but if they're not allowed to, then they're not, are they? So I had to go to another company who was able to give me <laughs> next day delivery on batteries? Because they sent them on a boat? Yeah, right. yeah. They understand the problems, but Amazon don't. And I've tried to explain this to Amazon. They don't give two shits. We've got two big Amazon warehouses, one in Carrick Fergus, one in Belfast Docks, that they they ship things in via boat, and they could keep stuff stocked in there that, that doesn't have to use, or that, that shouldn't be using 
um, planes to come over and, and drop them off. Why, why, it's, why doesn't that happen? Is that not some sort of Amazon logistics that they pride themselves on having a department that is so advanced? Yeah, but they'd have to... In, but, yeah, in, but in can't those send me a packet of lithium batteries. In those warehouses, though, they would have to have one of everything that Amazon has in order that, by chance, you might be ordering something so that they can get... You know, it. one of everything that they can't send through traditional methods. Yeah, well, that's still going to be quite a lot, isn't it? 4K movies. <laughs> Buying a, an Ultra HD not, through Amazon, they up. sometimes do. They do international. <laughs> um, they do international movies releases because 4K is now sort of region free. If you buy it in America, you can bring it home, and unless it's got a Blu-ray in the packaging with it, you're not going to have a problem paying it back on 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 the hardware. So. You can go on to Amazon and there's some select titles that you can order that come in from America through Amazon. And they can be delivered to Scotland, Wales and England. Guess where they can't be delivered to? Why? Why can't they be delivered to Northern Ireland? What is the difference? You know, what, what makes... I, I pay my taxes. I'm a, I'm a British citizen. My passport, one of them, says that I'm a British citizen. So what's going on here? You know, that this is not right. So I, I challenge Amazon, you know, why am I paying this money for your lousy service? There's nothing that, that actually makes sense. And whenever you go on, say you want to actually buy something for Amazon, a little bit of uh, a USB cable, you have to hunt through all the crap of the day to be able to find something that is useful, that is something that is good looking. And something that is, you know, maybe worthwhile. That's going to you're you're better off going to to eBay and being able to look at the feedback on that, because Amazon reviews are pretty much rubbish, all nonsense. Um, or the, the, there's some sort of outfit that's gone in and put in fake reviews here, there, and everywhere. Um, you you don't know what you're buying, and eventually it'll arrive and. <laughs> If you buy something large, like if you buy a VR headset, it's entirely possible you'll open the box and find a bag of sugar inside it from the sounds of things. There's an awful lot of rip-off things happening in the Amazon world that is just pushing me against paying Amazon. Yes, we're getting, we're moving away very much Stream, from streaming Streaming woes, woes yes. <laughs> but it, it can't justify uh, paying any more than what I was paying already. So you know, I'm I'm getting rid of Amazon. I'm, I'm saying farewell to Amazon. Yeah, that, yeah. That's it. Well, if Disney I, if, Plus. If I didn't get different. reliable next day service, so would I. But that holds me in. Yeah, but but the the day that you stop getting that, or say for example, they were to turn around and say, "Well, you, we're not going to ship your batteries anymore." What do you do? Well, I don't. Is that when? Every, I mean, I I do sometimes order batteries, but they don't have to be next day. Not usually. It's not an urgent thing, so I can. Well, I can they stop altogether? I can plan ahead of that. Uh, plan ahead for that. If they stop them altogether, yes, that would be a problem. As I say, the delivery thing for me is where it matters. All these other services, the ones you just listed that Amazon provide, I can live without them. I, I hardly use them. I, I rarely, rarely use any of those other things you listed. Um, but the, the but you're paying for them. I, I'm well, I'm paying uh, in my mind in my mind's eye. I'm paying for next day delivery. They are choosing to to give me those extra things. It's a bit like um, I pay for Microsoft three six five, but don't use anything of the one gigabytes of um, OneDrive because I do it all in um, in Google and what have you. Mm. So I, it's just like if they want to bolt that on, that's up to them. But I don't have to use it. I don't actually want to use it. But this really is just the start of it, isn't it? The very fact that something like Amazon Prime, and I think Netflix is guilty of the same thing. If you try to to play Netflix back on your computer, you may struggle to get Ultra HD because um, of their signatures thing or whatever it is. They they only have select. Oh, what's his name on on YouTube? Uh, oh, I've forgotten his name. There's a fellow, a well-known YouTuber, who's done a whole thing about how Netflix only delivers proper Ultra HD to particular manufacturers. You know, um, as I say, a Sony TV or a Samsung TV, they will get it. But if you try to do Ultra HD to your computer, then you're only going to get um, 720 at best. 
which is nuts. Absolutely nuts. You're you're paying for Ultra HD, but they're only going to give it to you uh, as 720 because you're using it on something they don't want you to, to be streaming on. Mm. So I... I I think I'm done with streaming and I'm done with the idea that they can just remove content um, when they want to. Netflix was set up under the proviso that it was essentially a deal with uh, with studios that was providing people with a legitimate alternative to their big DVD collection where they had 20,000 titles uh, from Paramount and from, uh, from various different uh, big studios and you'd be able to go on and find your movies you could stick in sean connery and it would bring you up a huge wadge of sean connery movies to sit back and enjoy a sean fest now netflix is essentially a library of their own stuff with a wee bit added in there's a there i think they've only got about four thousand titles outside of their own netflix branded titles so they, they've changed exactly what it is they provide. If you want to go and watch Cocoon, you can't because it's not there. And I think Disney have now realized this. And that's why recently they've done a deal with uh, Sony for Sony to be doing the, the or to take over their, their disc, uh, disc library d- delivery system or whatever, disc authoring and, and selling. So they're, they're going to be putting stuff out through Sony. So the likes of, say, uh, Star Wars or whatever, or, or the Avengers, or Song of the South. Uh, Sony will be in charge of releasing all of those on disc worldwide, uh, which I think is an important step for that the realisation that physical media isn't going away. People keep saying that it's dead, but it's not. I think it's stronger than ever. And you see people or see manufacturers and boutique labels and all those sorts of things setting up all the time and pushing out new and more exciting uh, movies. And it's not just the the A crop of movies. You know, you have absolute garbage coming out from a boutique label where they've just gone the extra mile and they're packaging in posters and documentaries and all sorts of things because it's a labour of love and they know it'll sell out um, because they do a limited run And they can never quite get enough. And people are sort of fighting over it. And you get scalpers coming in. And that's, you know, that that creates a wee bit of a famine amongst amongst the the retailers. And I've I've been caught up in that. You can't get that with streaming. They they can't achieve that with streaming. And ultimately, I think they're all going to go down the pan. Because they're getting too expensive. The quality of it is not not good. I don't think I've ever really watched a proper uh, Netflix show or or movie that i've gone i want that in my collection because it's just getting worse and worse ted (laughs) you've been listening to the monologue known as (laughs) it's banter come on you have to come back the new section called banters so next week if you don't like all that skip the first 20 minutes of each show (laughs) (laughs) um yeah, well, we know, uh, we were saying earlier that things are coming back, aren't they? That vinyl and film cameras and uh, just everything goes around in circles. And uh, DVDs and Blu-rays and whatever else are, are going to be a part of that. CDs will be next, no doubt. But it's also about supply and demand. So most people on the planet will be happy to do the streaming th- th- thing. They won't be bound up and concerned about the things that you've just gone through. They just take it on face value. They watch what's there and they won't watch what's not there. It might encourage, in some circles, more... Um, pirating I suppose and people going and finding ways of watching things that are not legal so there could be that as a a knock on effect but I think most people just take life on face value and say "Um, I've got Netflix I've got Amazon Prime I can see most things and you know there's not things that I particularly want to seek out otherwise to see you know the things that my friends are talking about are on those streaming services um and if i if they're not they'll be on apple tv and i perhaps i'll consider paying for that as well people are not like specialists like you going out and saying well i want this film from 1954 and i want it in reconditioned 4k and blah 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 um so anyway yes that's my (laughs) response 
Well, I, th- I do think it's a it's a bit of control of of what actually goes out on TV screens, and I know that Disney were trying to do this over the years, where they were looking to control multiplexes and what goes out in movie theaters, um, where they were actually actively attempting to get. Uh, th- they were they were holding back some of their bigger films, unless the cinema that uh, would be displaying it. Um, did things that Disney wanted them to do, like like didn't show a particular film from another studio. You know, you could have Avengers if you don't show. Uh, I'm trying to think of an epic that came out, uh, Valerian. I, I I don't know who made Valerian or whatever, but it was a big sci-fi blockbuster, and uh, Disney would say, if you're showing Valerian, then you can't have this new Star Wars movie. We're not having them sitting side by side, so. You know, the the cinema would have to go, right, well, let's not put Valerian out. We'll just put Star Wars in instead, because that's going to be our big payday. The good news is and that if you've listened to this, you won't have to listen to it again on Projector Room this week. Because <laughs> we don't talk about these sorts of things. <laughs> it, it kind of feels as though it belongs there, though. <laughs> It does. Um, and we would get Alan's take as well, but then he's he's so anti-Disney. Uh, but I think Disney is just following the money. I don't think they're as corrupt as, as Alan likes to make out. I think they're just, you know, the fa- the very fact they've done a bit of a U-turn on their disc uh, approach, because that I, th- I really thought that they were looking to get rid of all physical media so that they would be able to control what's on your home screens at all times. And eventually Disney will take down Netflix and Amazon Prime and then everyone will just have to have a Disney Plus subscription and that's it. Um, but I, I, think, I think they're sort of taking a step back going, hang on a second, we can't do this. It's, it's too big. Let's just uh, let's start selling DVDs again. Now that we've managed to wipe out most of the DVDs that were currently in existence, and people are a wee bit hungry for DVDs, because I don't think people like to have their movie collections. It's a bit of a statement. You walk into someone's house, you're having a party, and there's always someone who goes over and investigates your little library of DVDs or CDs, and it tells them something about you. And people lose that, and they end up sort of sitting in their house or their apartment with a bland, boring wall with nothing on it other than maybe some pictures of a crap holiday they went on. And they don't have a, love, a luxuriant collection of, of Rambo, um, Faster Pussycat Kill Kill, and What's a Nice Girl Like You Doing in an Anal Movie Like This? You know, that sort of thing creates a, just a little bit of character. A talking point. You have Hello? You have, you have <laughs> spoken... <laughs> All right. Well, um, uh, you can, uh, most people will probably fast forward to that turned off now anyway. So, uh, and I'm doing this with a cold too. Yeah. I only had to pause it twice there. Um, so we'll move into the news because it's uh, it's topically related. Uh, Super DVDs. Um, this is um, a new type of DVD that is coming along, or digitally versatile disc, uh, which uh, can store up to a mass of one petabit of data on there which is um, 125,000 gigabytes on a single DVD sized disc. What's that in terabytes? Um, uh, 125 terabytes? Is it? No, isn't it? Or is it 1,250? I'll look remember. it up while you're um, talking. Alright, okay. Um, but they're they're referring to this as the big boy, um, which is one hundred twenty-five. Nice one hundred twenty-five gigabytes. Terabytes. Terabytes. Sorry, yes, yeah. terabytes. Yeah, <laughs> um, and that could pretty much store an entire library of movies. Wow, yeah, that's amazing. On one disc, you'd be able to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, which is insane. Scratching that disc and losing all the contents would uh, would have you a wee bit upset however you know um, the disc architecture has gotten better and better and it's it's a lot more difficult to scratch and destroy the contents of a 4k ultra hd than it is to to do a a cd or dvd from back in the 90s they are bigger and better and more robust than they ever have been before so hopefully this will be the same Uh, you can read and write up to a hundred layers of data in the space of just 54 nanometers which is exceptionally exciting. 
Mm. You'll be able to just, instead of having to buy movie by movie, you'll just be able to buy Paramount. All of their movies on there. <laughs> from, Universal. From, what, from what I understand reading on about this is that normal DVDs have only got one layer. So the, mm. the, the difference here is that they've, they've found some way of creating a hundred layers of data instead of just one, which is why it's so amazing. Well, the original DVD came out, it was a, it was a single layer, but um, then I don't know if you remember the boxes. I think I have one beside me in, in the drawer here, which was dual layer DVDs. Right. Rewritable. <laughs> I was like, whoa! <laughs> yes. So, yeah, so there's all the play for yeah. it. DVDs are going to get more and more exciting. That means they'll be able to start packaging an entire game on a disc and uh, sell it to you. So you can, you can take your PS5, your Xbox Series X, and, and buy a game for it and take it home and not have to download it and install it. They're talking also about the, the envir- environmental environmental impact of um, data centers with this as well so instead of having Mm. these huge data centers like google and the rest of them have got if you can store this much stuff on such tiny facilities it suddenly shrinks all that right down and the electricity being used and all the rest of it Um, so it's not just for the likes of us that can have all our collection of everything on one disc Um, there is a, a a broader perspective yeah, I wonder if you need a 42-speed DVD-ROM drive to be able to read it. Oh, yeah. Do you remember DVD-ROM speeds? Mm. You'd be able to, you, know, you might not be able to afford a 64 one, but you might be able to get a 16, and you put it in, and it would write slower, <laughs> read yeah. slower than, than the other ones. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's, that's really exciting news, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the FTC is going to ban AI inter- in- impersonators... Uh, of individuals um, and unveils greater powers to win stolen money back. What exactly does this mean, Ted? Does uh, this mean I can't impersonate Donald Trump anymore? Yeah, I think that's the general idea, is that, that the FTC in America have got the power to where you've got something created that is false um, via impersonation, which we've seen some examples of in American politics just recently. Um, the FTC have got powers to go and uh, seize the naughty people doing it. Now, the 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 the, the thing is though that it's going to just make it go underground, isn't it? It might stop Chat GPT doing it or allowing cyber criminals in, in into there to do it. But the the, mm. the software that cyber criminal use criminals use, they're not going to be open there out out open and out there anyway. They, they'll have their own their own back doors to everything. And and you know, good luck to the FTC or the American authorities actually hounding someone down to try and stop them or to find them or to send someone to jail about it i just can't see how th- this is in any way practical but then maybe i misunderstand it and don't understand the american system and of how that sort of thing might work well i think they need to be able to establish these sorts of things so whenever they catch someone they have something to be able to charge them with so they need to have rules and laws uh, so they can they can hand down sentences. If they don't have that, then you know no crime can be well, done. As long as you can catch the person. Well, where where someone has lost money because Donald Trump has phoned them and, and said I need money for my campaign, um, and they've they've handed over money, but it's not actually him; uh, it's someone else pretending to be him. Um, then you know they can they can then go and investigate that, and they have the rules and the laws that they can charge but the if, person uh, with if they can but, but if that's being if that's some bloke in a basement in Moscow somewhere how on earth are they going to try and manage that in this worldwide internet system that we have i just can't see how all right if it's some bloke in a bedroom in america in philadelphia um in his mum's house and they can track him down fair enough they can they can they can grab people in those kinds of ways but not proper cyber criminals surely they'll be they'll be um protecting themselves against this kind of thing so should they just not bother I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that, you know, I, the, 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 perhaps there should be other ways of doing this which are actually policeable and, and enforceable 
with, you know, because they're the ones that are talking about cyber criminals, not Joe Bloggs in his mum's house in his bedroom. You know, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know enough about it, really. I, I think the new term for Joe Bloggs is now Big Gene from Bally Bean. That's... <laughs> But, uh, yeah, no, they need to be doing something. They need to have a, a benchmark for them to be able to, to, to put people off, knowing full well that people are behaving illegally and then be able to throw books yeah. at them once, uh, and, and, once and, it and, goes and, through. And who they're trying to get here are, 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 are just low-level, not cyber criminals, inverted commas, I don't think, but low-level people that are mucking about on 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 Instagram or, or tic, TikTok <laughs> oh or... And, and and making up a video with chat GVT that looks like Donald Trump talking and I, I don't know I don't know it's it's a subject worthy of deeper investigation really isn't it it is yes yeah no but it, 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 it's just people muck it up right? <laughs> <laughs> they should just cut it out that's that's what they I just think do. there's a difference between cyber criminals and little Johnny in his mum's house big Gene down in Ballyveen okay yeah Right, well, the last controversial stop, uh, topic here is that Japan is to launch the world's first wooden satellite in uh, to combat space pollution. Uh, a wooden satellite. Uh, the, uh, yeah, if you think about things that re-enter Earth's atmosphere, they tend to burn up. Having a wooden satellite would probably not do very well. Um, but I guess this is the sort of thing that they're not looking for it to... I think they want. No, I think they want it to burn up. I think that's the point. Whenever it's re-entering, yeah. 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 Um, but then all the components and things like that. Well, I suppose they're going to be small enough. They're going to burn out, burn up anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the and also space is a pretty good place for wood to be because it's not going to rot or anything. It's not. It's not going to get wet. No. Apparently, they've done some testing on the ISS, and they they said that there's no creatures to get um, you know into organic materials, which would happen on Earth. And um, that they it wouldn't yeah it's, it, it doesn't rot as you say um, and it doesn't burn and there's no oxygen in space so it that you, yeah I can see why they're doing it it's an interesting idea what is it that it says somewhere what sort of a wood they've used what was it now um, I think it was Sam um, from cedar um, IKEA. Was, it, was, it, was it cedar wood no. Um, it's here somewhere in this article. I can't find it. Cherry. Cherry wood. Japanese cherry. Okay. So they've, they've obviously decided that's the best one to use. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, it will help with all the space debris, won't it? It will, but it won't help with deforestation because then uh, all of a sudden all satellites will be built out of wood. Uh, and uh, before you know it, huge swathes of the Amazon will be chopped down and sent into space. <laughs> But it's all right because the carbon, what's it, when it burns up on re-entry, will come back into the atmosphere. Oh, probably. Yeah, yeah it'll be worse, won't it? It'll be above the cloud level. Ah. Uh. <laughs> right. Okay. okay. Serious problems there. We've identified. Yeah. Mm. Think yeah, about it, we're Japan. Not just idiots here, are we? <laughs> okay. So uh, forget about your eSIM. Uh, there's a new multi-operator SIM that could be swapping mobile networks as easy as ABC. Uh, but it's not suitable for smartphones right now. Where are they going to put this instead? Um, well, I, I, I don't think that's the point, really. The, the point is the technology. Um, it may not be ready for smartphones, but it will be eventually ready for smartphones. What they're talking about, there's two companies in Germany, by the looks of it, that are, that are launching this. Is it Germany or is it um, Scandinavia? I thought it was Germany. Um, Deutsche Telekom IoT and Tele2. That sounds yeah. German. So they've uh, they've devised a system whereby you could, you, you see the the thing is about this RSIM though is that you still you're going to have to have two contracts and let's say all the operators across the world do a deal with each other. They're saying that you can go roaming with it, and as soon as you go, it it, it will petition the the networks every ten 
second no every 60 seconds it will petition the network and it will find out which is your nearest network and it will automatically whatever your your contract is or whatever it will automatically connect it, it, it will find a service um, but that but presumably that then means that when you get home from roaming that service you've connected to is going to send you a bill or something or I, 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 it doesn't seem that clear really how it's going to work on that kind of level but that but mm. that's what the the whole thing is about it's saying you no longer need an e-sim you no longer need an uh, a traditional sim this r sim everyone's r sim will be the same and your con your contractor will connect to it and that'll be the end of it which actually would suit me really well because i'm fed up with swapping sim cards around um <laughs> but I do suspect, of course, that these operators are not going to do this for free. So expect to be paying multiple operators. Well, unless your cellular operator does a deal with all of the rest of the operators, then maybe not. I don't know. But then how many can you have on the one SIM? I think it's, it's, no, it's limitless, I think. That, that if you if you go roaming, if you do a tour of Europe, then when you go between the countries, as I understand it, it will find every sixty seconds it's petitioning the network, and it will find the network that is the best one to connect to. Um, as I say, the the the, the devil's in the details. Right. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Devil's in the details. Anyway, we'll see what happens. Don't see that. Okay. Um, that was okay. that. That's a, an experiment going on by these German companies, by the looks of it. Um, and we'll see what happens. My, meanwhile, Sounds everyone exciting. else is going eSIM, aren't they? Yes, they are. Yes, um, I, I think I I had a phone call during the week asking me about my eSIM and if I wanted to take out a contract for it. I was like, no, shove off. Do. Yeah. Yeah, why would I want to pay two contracts on the phone? Yeah. Noobs. Right, Samsung is now producing, mass producing even, uh, one terabyte micro SD cards. Ted, the time has arrived. Yeah. You can now get these everywhere from for anyone at any stage. This is not any micro SD one terabyte card, though. This is a Samsung SD Express one terabyte micro SD card. The big boy. And they reckon that um, this is going to read and write, sorry, read read at 800 MB per second, megabits or megabytes, whichever it is, per second. Whereas um, at the moment, the UHS um, one memory cards li- are limited to 200. So basically it's four times as fast to, to, to read. Um, there's no mention of write speeds, but um, one of the things they're concerned about, however, with this card is the fact that it's going to get hot because it's working so fast and so mm. powerfully. And so they have invented this thing called, um, what's it called? Oh, dynamic thermal guard, um, which is apparently supposed to maintain the optimum temperature during long usage sessions when it's stuffed inside your gaming handheld or something and blazing data across. Um, but yeah, we've seen one terabyte um, micro SD cards. We've spoken about them on this show for ages, but this seems to be stepping up the game to something very much much more powerful. Yeah, I suppose whenever you mention the, 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 the data speeds and how hard it gets... Yeah, you're right. I was, I took the USB out of the back of my Nvidia Shield the other day, and I touched the metal bit, and bugger me, it was hot. Yeah. Don't bugger me. Uh, don't, no, don't, that's, that's not worthwhile. That, yeah. No. But uh, yeah, this um, this would be super hot inside the. It's going to require. It, it'll ultimately impact on. The cooling of your phone, won't Except it? Except that it's got dynamic thermal guard, so don't you worry about it. They've thought about this. But what? can't they just cover the earth in dynamic <laughs> thermal guard and we'll get rid of global temperatures yes. rising and stuff? Yes, good idea. Go and patent it. I, I, don't, uh, I don't have much hope in dynamic thermal guard that much. It's probably just toothpaste. <laughs> um, yeah. I, th- I still think your your phone's going to heat up if you're especially if you're playing Call of Duty or something like that. There's no mention of money, uh, incidentally, here. No, no, I was looking for the price there, um, and it's, unfortunately there isn't one. No. Um, 
Samsung is not liable for any damages, loss, or incurred for memory card recovery. Six proofs. Of it. There's something down here about temperature, though. Um, operating temperatures of minus 25 degrees to 85 degrees, or minus 13 degrees Fahrenheit to 185 degrees Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit's a stupid thing. I it? agree. It's, it's, it's much more sensible. Yes. Um, non-operating temperatures of minus 40 degrees uh, to 85 degrees withstand standard airport x-ray machines, magnetic field equivalent to high... Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so... The it, it operates up to eighty five degrees C. Wonder if that's whenever the thermal guard has to kick into gear. Hmm. Or if it was to go over that, is that wherever it goes? Hang on a second. We now need the thermal guard. Roll out the thermal guard. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Anyway, all right. Well, we'll move on uh, to something less interesting. ZTE. Uh, they have shown off a new 3D-capable Nubia tablet at Mobile World Congress. Holy crap, is Mobile World Congress on at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> you fell asleep and really? missed it. You were sick and you missed it. I was we, sick we spoke week, about yeah. this 3D-capable Nubia tablet before, but it seems like they've updated it. Um, we spoke about it because I was talking, if you remember, about how on earth uh, they yes. get that thing to pop out of the screen like hologram style you've seen these pictures of like your south korean streets and you look up at these billboards and these there's these 3d things coming out of the screen at you well it looks like they've done the same with this anyway they we spoke about the original one from um nubia before that's zte before and this one is an update to that which just makes it bigger better more powerful um updated snap Dragon 8 Gen 2 chipset, more storage, more battery, more everything. But, yeah, it's basically an update. Hmm, okay. It, it, it looks pretty tidy. Mm. I, I take back everything I said about ZTE. They are exciting. Mm-hmm. I'd have one of those. 86-degree viewing. I have you ever actually stood in a, a, a real street and looked at one of these um, these thingies where it pops out, the, the 3D pops out and... I've only ever seen it on film, but have you ever seen one? <laughs> Back to the Future 2, where Jaws pops out and eats Marty McFly. <laughs> um, no, I don't think I no. have. I'd no. like to see one with my own eyes, to see if it really looks as wild as it appears to on you know, on, on, on coverage. I've kind of done it. I've, I've stood in a street. Yeah, well, that's halfway there, certainly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. If anyone lives in Hong Kong or or Seoul or whatever, and has actually s- stood and looked at this thing, do get in touch and let us know what it's really like. Yes. In the meantime, if you're not wanting that whole 3D display, you could get yourself the next paper Whoa. TCL, which is a 14 inch 2.4K tablet, perfect for comfortable reading. Um, it, it's pretty big, 14 inches. I wouldn't say that's comfortable reading, but uh, you could throw it at someone and it would really <laughs> hurt them. Um, it's got the next paper 3.0 display technology built into it as well, uh, which um, some people really love, including the writer on Android Authority. Yeah, yeah. Um, and says it provides a very comfortable experience while reading, browsing the web, or even watching videos. If you'd, if you'd seen uh, the next paper display, you would be enthused about it as well, I promise you. Well, I, have you stood in a street and seen a next paper display? No, but I've had a next paper um, phone here. Tim Evans sent one over for me to review. And oh, and it's yeah. really impressive. The next paper, 40 it was, um, last year's model. The 50's out now. But it, it's just really, really impressive. I love it. I, I, I'd like it on all my phones, frankly, because it's, um, it's just very, very cool and virtually non-reflective. It's like we're looking at a really good colour Kindle display. I'm... I, you know, you you can stick your super duper saturated 
colourful, bright OLEDs. I'll take an X-Paper every time. So 14-inch tablet uh, actually would be of interest to me. And it would certainly be inter- of interest to my dad, whose eyesight is really mm. poor, and he would be able to read his Kindle books and his Google Play books on this really well. Um, so depending on how much money he, he's got to chuck about and when this becomes available, um, they're saying under $400 for this, aren't they? Um, so, <laughs> Wait, which just rounded up to three nine nine. You know, we we could become a family of TCL next paper fans. I think. Well, uh, otherwise, the the it's no slouch. It's got the MediaTek Helio G ninety nine inside of it. There's eight gigabytes of RAM, two hundred fifty six gigabytes of storage, and a ten thousand milliamp hour battery. Uh, it's got a thirty three watt. Uh, charging facility and it comes with a stylus or well it, it uses a stylus and supports a stylus and the display is 14.25 inches uh, which is 240 by 1600 resolution of 60 hertz. The resolution doesn't matter with this it's, it's, it's immaterial <laughs> um, okay well yes I, 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 yeah I, I can I don't share your excitement but um Yes, I think you would honestly nice. if you saw one. You would. It's really impressive. I, I, and it's and at the moment it's really cheap. The the, the next paper forty, is like a hundred and sixty nine quid or something. The next paper fifty, which was announced at MWC, um, that might be a bit more expensive as we go forward. But it's then it's going to be more capable with a more um, up to date chipset and all the rest of it. I'm really um, tracking TCL on this next paper thing. I think it's it's going to be a really good future. Do we get TCL here properly, or do we have to import? No, no, you can. It's available from outlets. You know, I mean, you wouldn't get one on contract from, no doubt, from Vodafone or whatever. But you can buy one on Amazon. Um, TCL devices are widely available here. Okay, fair enough. All right, um, you can also get for eleven dollars a one point seven inch wide computer, that's almost ten times more powerful than the Raspberry Pi Pico. Eleven dollars. This is the Milk V Duo S. Um, it offers um, dual CPUs, five hundred and twelve megabytes of RAM. That's a half a gig of RAM. That is and the Wi-Fi six connectivity. Uh, it's an ARM CPU. I don't know if they're going into the specs of what it actually is. It can reach one gigahertz in speed. It's not saying which it is. Uh, there's oh, it comes with both a Risk V chip as well as the ARM CPU. Um, it's got eight gigabytes of eMMC storage. Um, it runs both Linux and RTOS, uh, and it's really small. It's tiny, isn't it? Do you, do you think is, that could yeah. replace your? Well, uh, from the picture, it looks like it's got a USB A slot and a USB C slot and an Ethernet port. Um, and those components on the board are just minuscule. And y- are, you've yeah. got, um, as I say, you've got Raspberry Pi stuff on the go. Do you think that this is a, a really a challenge to that? Well, I, I, I'd say that this is actually just like a little, it's a, a wee bit of hardware that would probably be used to run one thing, whether it be sort of VPN or something like that. So you can plug it directly into your, your router and have a, a hard, VPN there and it's just dedicated to that or maybe it runs um, security software for a, a, a video camera or something like that that's on your property mm-hmm. and you can just set it on this and forget about right. it you know it's just going to run and it'll sit there using a minimal amount of power um, these things uh, running those sorts of apps isn't going to be particularly taxing to the CPU that's inside of it you know I, my, I, I have my Raspberry Pi 3 and I was looking at it the other day, and I think I'm using maybe two percent of the of the CPU at any one time. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I could install a whole bunch of other stuff as well, but I just don't want to. You know, you, you could you could have a whole rake of these. You could have a whole line of them just running little widgets, essentially, uh, that that help around the house or help uh, with your security or your internet, and. Uh, and to play with mm. that's, that's the beauty of it mm. I wouldn't say that people are going to go and build a computer out of this and sit there and use Microsoft Office on there and have like a really dinky computer sitting in front of them that's a bit of a gimmick that I suppose that uh, some YouTubers will do going wow here's a whole computer um, 
but you know uh, I, I i can see it as a as a toy um and it just fills a function mm. would you ever think about getting one of these no I, i'm not heavily enough into this kind of thing like you are but i thought you might um be interested because it's so cheap and so small just to get one in and have a play with it and see what happens um, and see what you can do with it because I think I, th- I think you're more the tinkerer with this sort of thing than I am. Well, yeah, um, I've got my Synology running behind me, and I don't know if you can hear burbling away lightly in the background, but it's it's always doing something. And uh, because I run Plex through it, I'm actually looking to offload some of the processes that maybe it's doing that could end up just impacting ever so slightly on Plex. Mm-hmm. Now, I watched a movie the other night in Ultra HD. And uh, there was a stutter about, I don't know, 45 minutes into the film. We lost a couple of frames. I don't know what was going on. Mm. Something was happening. And I was not happy. So I'm, I'm thinking about maybe having to, to take some of the processes off the Synology so that I'm not just maxing it out at any one stage. Because, you know, you're running a few different things there. They can run on the likes of these. And at $11, to be able to have this running something you know it just uh it takes it off something else and it can be running 24 7 and so small you can just attach it to the wall behind it stick it to the bottom of the desk and away you go we'll, we'll send we'll get we'll send one to ian barson he'll tell us all about it and he'll tell us what he's used it for i'm sure he would be able to find good uses and that's the beautiful thing about it is finding out what other people use these for and going Oh, I could do that yeah, too. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I love those books where you, you know it's this Raspberry Pi uh, made easy or whatever, and you 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 thumb through it and you see someone's using it to to automate the watering of their plants. It's like, wow, really? <laughs> there, there's something that can do that. Yeah. Cheapers, and it just takes one little bit of you know um, responsibility off you or off another system. Mm-hmm. It's great. Mm. Love these sorts of things. All right, uh, moving on to, well, going back to slightly bigger things. Uh, this is the 12-inch Honor Pad 9, which is now available. I think I got an email about this. Yeah, I think day. we've spoken about this before. I think the news here is that it's now available in the UK. Yeah, yeah, this is a good-looking tablet that uh, features a 12.1-inch IPS LCD display, uh, 2560 by 1600 resolutions at 120 hertz. No less. Uh, it boasts 500 nits of brightness, uh, supports a stylus, and has a Snapdragon 6 Gen 1 chip inside of it with an 8 megapixel camera, 13 megapixel camera, 8,300 milliamp hour battery, and 35 watt charging. It uh, runs Magic OS, and are you starting to dance or something? <laughs> Did you hear that? That was my, I've got my, um, th- there's midges flying around in this place, and I'm so sick of it. I put my, um, you know, cafe zapper thingy on, my fly zapper, and one of them obviously <laughs> just got in there. <laughs> oh, into the zapper? Yeah, that was the, when, when one of the flies hits the... the, oh, the I thought you were clapping your hands, the, right? The okay. tube, it goes... <laughs> Bang! <laughs> yes, I have one of those as well in the kitchen for during the summer. They're they're terrific fun. Yeah. Anyway, go on. No, uh, that's about well, it. They, um, it's it's going to be about three hundred yeah. points. Um, and also, the thing to say here that is of note is that this was released in China last December, and it was released on Android thirteen because you know Android fourteen was really really new then. Um, this is going to be released on Android 13 here as well in April. No, sorry, the end of February. Um, and the uh, bad news is that they're only committing to one update. So even before Android 14, you know, uh, the, the point is that at some point in the future you'll get Android 14 on it. But that's your lot. It's being released on 13. The yeah. 15 is going to be coming in a few months' time. No chance. So you're going to pay 300 quid on a tablet. I'll tell you what, I'd rather buy a Samsung tablet, even if it costs a bit more than 300 quid. Although the FE versions are probably not. Um, and you get so much more with the Samsung. Um, I think that this, the, the price of this should be 200 quid, and then they would sell like much better. Yeah, I'm just having a quick look at the comments to see what people are picking up on to see if there's anything that we should be wary of. And and there's three things that they're giving off about. And the first is that there's no fingerprint scanner. 
um, there's no micro SD card slot and no headphone jack. Right. Which, uh, you know, it isn't something that we in, went straight away for. Are we so used to them not having those things? Or are we used to expecting them to have them and then it becomes a bit of a shock when you take it out of the well, box? Well, my, my Samsung tablet has got a fingerprint scanner and it's also got a micro SD card slot. It doesn't have a headphone jack, but then that's the way we're going with everyone these days. Um, and... Um, so, so two of those three things, I think you can just do better with Samsung. Um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, of course, you're going to pay a bit more. How, I, I can't remember how much a, a Samsung um, FE tablet is now. I'll have a look while you're talking. Well, uh, the the one thing that this does have under its uh, under its robe, I don't know, uh, under its that's one of caveat that it has is uh, it's for an extra fifty pounds. You can get the optional keyboard case, mm. which looks very much like some of the Samsung ones, and it's a good bit cheaper than some of the Samsung ones as well. Because uh, I, I was looking at my uh, my Tab S nines uh, cover, and I've just got the book cover cover, and it's starting to look a bit rough around the edges. Now I don't take it out terribly often. Usually, whenever I do, I stick it in a in a in a bag with me or a backpack or whatever. But it's not. It doesn't get mistreated in any way, but it's starting to look a wee bit kind of duff around the edges. And that book cover was like 70-odd quid. Um, when it was new, and I, I feel a bit ripped off because it's not even a year old, mm -hmm. and it's really showing signs of wear and tear. If, for people who have bought it and taken it to work with them every single day, I imagine it's falling apart. Right, here you go. The Samsung Tab uh, Galaxy Tab S9 FE with an S Pen, 128 gigabytes, is 449. And they're offering me five months at 90 quid a month. But but you see what I mean. All right, if the difference between 300 quid and 449 quid was really significant to someone, fair enough. But I would much rather pay another 150 quid and get a Samsung, frankly. But then I'm, yeah. in a, I'm in a bit of a Samsung mode at the moment. <laughs> well, you also know what you're going to be getting whenever it comes to, to updates yes, as exactly. well. I don't think Honor has a promise of seven years worth of no, updates No, no, it's got one. All. That's it. That's what I was saying. It arrives on Android mm. 13 and it's going to get 14. I don't know about security updates. That, that's not mentioned. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Well, moving back to Samsung then, we'll just go with that. Because the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 is launching in the US and globally on February the 26th, which was last week. It was last week, wasn't it? Yeah, it was oh, last yeah. Monday. This is, this is an old article, isn't it? It must have already come it out. It is. But it's, it's quite exciting because the Galaxy Book 4 is always something that people do tend to make a bit of a song and dance about because they're, they're just nice mm. laptops, aren't they? And this is... Uh, it is a Windows one, isn't it? I'm yeah, not wrong yeah, about that. I'm, yeah. yeah, because they have done the Chromebook variant as mm -hmm. well from time to time. But that's called the Chromebook, mm -hmm. isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, usually. Chromebook. <laughs> 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 they get around things like that. Um, this has, uh, there's there's a couple of different flavors. So the Galaxy Book 4 Pro, the Galaxy Book 4 Pro 360, and the Galaxy Book 4 Ultra. The Ultra has an RTX 2070 GPU inside of it, which is it's expensive. It's not the greatest graphics card in the world, but it's still we it packs a bit of a punch, I suppose. Um, there's a, it's got touchscreens as you would expect, and uh, it's 2880 by 1800 with a 120 hertz AMOLED display. There's Thunderbolt 4, four one USB Type A, and one HDMI 2.1, and it also has a micro SD card slot, so it can make use of your one terabyte drive there, or one terabyte uh, card, which whenever it comes out, to have loads of uh, storage on the go. But uh, the prices we have here are Canadian. Is there any British prices that we... Um, it's 639 quid, the equivalent from that Canadian. Six, so that's the base model, 639. Okay, that's not too bad. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, it'll, it'll do most things. And I, I, li I do like the keyboard on these. They've got the full keyboard with the numpad over to the right as well and a very generous trackpad much like uh the the macbook so uh yeah and it, it obviously runs intel's new 
core ultra chips. The ultra version uh, so is 1750 These Ooh, prices are right, going to be plus okay. VAT, no doubt. Hopefully. But but uh, once again, you're going to benefit most from this if you, you, you live in the galaxy world. Because a lot of these... Um, for example... Um, I had, for a while, Samsung allowed people to use the browser, the, the, the Samsung browser, on PC. I had it installed on my PC. I went to use it the other day, and it said, no, you need a, a Galaxy book for this to work. So some of the Galaxy um, um, functionality is locked down to those that have got other Galaxy devices, which is uh, it's very Apple, isn't it? And that's what they're after. They're, they want to lock people into their systems. Um, and you know, for someone that doesn't mind that, the the these the as you said at the outset, these bits of hardware are just beautiful. They're really nicely made, and they um they they they're very desirable. So, yeah, yeah. I'm just having a quick look at the the British prices to see what what they do. Oh, the, the Galaxy Four Ultra can go up to sixteen hundred quid uh, for the sixteen gigabyte model with five hundred and twelve. Well, is that including the AT? Yeah. Oh, right. Well, that's less than the equivalent from the Canadian then, which was seventeen fifty, I think I said. And you also get a free tablet S9 FE with that as well. <laughs> so that's four hundred and forty nine quid's worth. Right. Okay. <laughs> uh, or worth, or they say it's worth three hundred and eighty nine pounds. And then you get one hundred and fifty pounds to two hundred and fifty pounds when you recycle your old laptop, and you get fifteen percent off some Galaxy Buds. Mm. So there's all kinds of incentives for you to go and spend. So, so presumably the middle one, the Galaxy Book 4 Pro 360, turns itself around on its back. I'm, I'm guessing that's what the 360 means. Um, and the Ultra is the most powerful one, and the the ordinary one... Well, the ordinary, the ordinary one's called Pro. It's not called Galaxy Book 4. It's actually Galaxy Book 4 Pro. So there's not really a base model, is there? Um, no. So... Yeah, and bigger and better and all the rest of it, as usual, and more expensive. Just trying to find the 360. There's the 360 there. The the 15.6-inch Core f- i5, 8 gigabyte is £1,200. Pounds. Does it turn back on itself? It must do. Uh, convertible two-in-one design, yeah. Right. But it doesn't come with a free tablet or... Right other stuff with it it's only the ultra i think or the pro Mm -hmm. pro no no the pro 360 there it is there the i7 version which is 1800 pounds comes with a free s9 fe tablet right gosh very nice it's really confusing there's lots of them on Mm -hmm. their website but it'd be very nice to have yeah Um, definitely but mm -hmm. yeah not cheap as i say they're after apple with that really aren't they yes Okay, moving into the wearables watch. Uh, Ted, do you wear glasses? I do, when I need to look at things. <laughs> well, yeah, that's probably the best time. Um, no, I, I, I wear glasses when I need to look at my computer and when I'm reading um, and for long distance, but the middle bit is fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I don't wear glasses at all, but uh, Oppo has introduced new Air Glasses 3 XR prototypes uh, that are doing the rounds at Mobile World Congress. And they are a rather fetching looking pair of glasses that um, not only help you see things in the way that Ted was describing so vividly, <laughs> vividly um, but they also have built in uh, the glasses can access Oppo's Andy's GPT model by other smartphone uh, which provides a burdenless ai experience um the glasses weigh 50 grams and are self have self-developed resin wave guide with a refractive (laughs) index of (laughs) 1.70 i'm not going to bother reading any more of that technical mumbo jumbo uh but yeah these they look pretty cool um but they're not for long distances. Uh, th- these are not um, seeing your screen glasses, are they? We were talking on PSC last night about 
the meta glasses and it became obvious that essentially they are they do lots of things like take photographs and they um that they um, let you listen to audio and all the rest of it but they're not like google glass where you um, can see a computer screen or or call up your phone screen or anything like that um and the, the 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 assistant or the gemini or whatever it is or in this case the oppo what is it you called it um Andy's GPS thingy that's all accessible yeah. by microphones in the arms and all that sort of thing so i think they're after the meta glasses with this one um and the, but it's not it's not you know seeing your computer or your or your phone screen through yeah you see a, a particular our user interface that 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 pops up with your calendar and things oh, like that. Oh, do you? From, from what? Yeah, there's there's images oh, in the article. Oh, yeah, so there is. Oh, so maybe it's yeah. different to the meta ones then. I think Joe on the show last night said that you didn't see anything like that. It was just all oh, yeah. Right. There was nothing visual at all. Oh, no, so perhaps it is different then. Uh, edit out all that crap I just said. <laughs> well, no, you know, I wouldn't want to because you had Joe on the show and that that. And he's one of the brews. Yes. It rhymes, Joe well on the show. Well done, yes. <laughs> yeah. Galaxy Ring. We'll move on to that quite quickly. Remember, folks, I'm ill. Oh, oh Gareth. Uh, the Galaxy Ring will provide longer battery life than Samsung's watch smartwatches. The smart. I've got a smartwatch, and it, I think the battery life on it's pretty good. But they're talking about days on end with this ring, aren't they? Yeah, um, like yeah. is, it, is um, it eight, nine days or something? <laughs> oh no, hang on, four to seven days. Oh no, that's the Ura ring. Um, oh, the right, Ura, okay. Ura. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like you. Whenever you've uh, made some sort of sexual innuendo, you go. But <laughs> the difference, uh, the, the big difference here is though that it's got a battery inside it somewhere. And it hasn't got a screen, so no wonder it's not burning battery. Unlike the, um, you know, your your watch, which whenever you're doing anything with it, it it's it's got an OLED screen going. I don't know. Well, I, they, they they tease this at MWC. Apparently, they had this case, and there was a load of these rings inside this case on a display, and so all the. Um, poor people that are gone there hoping to get some information and hands on or hands in with the ring <laughs> um, yes. they, they didn't get it because it was all locked away so apparently um, in July which is when Samsung's next um, unwrapped event or whatever it's called is coming along they're going to be at, unpacked. unpacked sorry yeah um, they're going to be talking more about this because you know they haven't really said much about it so far yeah I honestly cannot get any enthusiasm out of me for for rings. I, I've tried. I've read a couple of articles and I've watched a couple of videos, and I've just switched off halfway through. I, it's one form of technology that I just cannot get behind. Well, I begrudge wearing my wedding ring yeah, because yeah. it's a big yeah. pain in the ass. But I know the days that I take it off to give myself a wee bit of a a breather. Um, are days that are being questioned <laughs> and, um, and that needs to go back you on again. But the whole idea of... <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't throw it at you, did I? <laughs> so I don't know where you're getting that from. Um, having a bit of technology built into it is is something that has never occurred to me that I would want. I don't know. If I could, if I could use this on my ring, in on my finger, instead of... How, <laughs> thank you for yes, clarifying. Thank you. I thought you'd leap on that. Um, I, if I could use this on my um, on my finger instead of having to wear a watch, and it did the same things pretty much. Because the truth is that even through this bout of fitness I'm having at the moment and monitoring my health, I very rarely look at the watch. Very rarely, I, I always look at the data um, that's been sent to my phone. So for me personally, if I wanted to do this whole health thing going forward long term I'd much rather wear a ring than a watch because I don't really want to wear a watch I don't like a watch around my wrist I find it tedious and I think that a ring would be smaller and less obtrusive so you know there, there's the other side of it we, we come from different angles yeah yeah we, we certainly do but we'll move on because makes sense yes. <laughs> right Infinix 
uh, demos uh, uh, color changing back panels that can fit on your phone with an e ink technology built into uh-huh. it as well. What <laughs> this is this going to be the answer to your prayers that you can have an e ink screen on the back of your? Just oh. reminded me of um, of Yota phone and how much I loved my Yota phone and the whole concept of that. But this is this is very different to this. This is this is like they've stuck a cheap um, e ink panel on the back of a phone and and it just doesn't do very much. Nothing like a mm. Yota phone. It just it basically is. It's a bit like these that, that Moto Mod thingy. No, no, not Moto Mod. What is it called? Moto. Um, where you where you chose what your colour your phone was and Motorola would make it for you, I can't remember what it's yeah. called now. But anyway, this one didn't last long. No, the, the, this one though is very very blocky, big pixels on the back of it, and most people will have a case on their phone anyway. It's all a bit silly. But what I do like is that someone's working on this and. You know, the next stage, presumably, of this will be to get back to something like the Yota phone, where you can have a useful e-ink screen on the back of your phone. Because I think if that's the target here, then kudos to them. Let's move it forward. And and this time it's colour and not mono like the Yota phone. Are you sure they're just not looking at some Japanese pornography on the back of the e-ink screen? <laughs> it's been it's been pixelated out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not what it reminds me of. I don't know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah okay. So, uh, well, moving on. Um, Motorola has showed us uh, that its phone um, can bend around the wrist. And, uh, yeah, this is one of those uh, phones that we've always... I think we've always had some sort of concept out there somewhere that as soon as the idea of a flexible screen has come along, uh, that the people have wanted to be able to slap a phone around their wrist like those those wristbands that you used to get when you were a kid. The Nokia Morph in 2008, I would like to quote. This is this okay. is exactly the same as that. Well, obviously with a more advanced operating system, but essentially physically the Nokia Morph, I think it was 2008. So, there you go. It's named after the uh the the, the, the grumpy little character from made out of plasticine, of course. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, it, it's a logical step. I fully reckon that we're going to get these one day, and I, I don't think that they'll really take off that well, but it's, it's a good idea. It kind of brings everything together, what you're talking about with watches. You'll be able to do that with your phone, um, I, I, and you'll be able to get bigger things. I, I just can't <laughs> see that I would want that around my wrist. Would you? I don't know. I, it, it's it's a good place to store it. Um, as, if you could just sort of clamp it on there, it, well, I suppose it would come in harm's way, wouldn't it? Just a wee bit like cuff. I remember getting my cuff caught around the door handle on the way into the room, and being dragged back. Mm. It's like if that was my phone, it would have been wrecked. Yeah, yeah, and and scratching as well. I mean, the Pixel Watch that my mum's got is bad enough for that. Um, mm. But can you imagine just scuffing against a wall or or a cupboard even? Anyway, this is just a concept. They're not they're not talking about bringing this to market, but the the MWC they just wanted to have a bit of fun with it, I think, and and show what Lenovo Rola are up to and what they can do. But as a frequency for a concept, it comes around an awful lot. Yeah. I think we do have to entertain <laughs> the idea that this is going to be put into production at one stage by some company somewhere, yeah. just to see if it works. If if they fart, does the smell linger? <laughs> <laughs> There's no smoke without fire, etc. Oh, that, that, that's a better one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Moving on to power banks. Power banks. Sorry, power banks. Yes, Google. What's the matter with you? I, no, I'm not googling power bank. Why are you recording everything that I'm saying? Mm, very worrying. Okay. Uh, Twenty-eight thousand milliamp hour. Pa- yeah. Blimey. Tell the tart to shut up. Shush. There, she's over in the corner. Right, um, uh, what was I talking about again? Oh, it was like a power bank, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, 28,000 milliamp hours. Is that is that news? I don't think I didn't think I looked at this. No, no, this today. is a, the, the, the point here is that it's a one of these um, Far East rugged phones, and it's the biggest battery that has ever oh, been see. put on one of these phones before. 28,000 milliamp hour. But this company. Um, 
I think it's Energizer, isn't it? Yeah, Energizer. I've got a track record, so this article goes on to say, of never bringing these things to, these things to market anyway. Again, it's a kind of concept for MWC to some degree. Um, but, yeah, yeah 28,000 milliamp hour. Of course, they wouldn't deliver one to you in Northern Ireland, would they? That would be classified as a power <laughs> bank, not a phone. <laughs> I do remember Lenovo made one years ago that had a really big battery, and it was it was like was it eight thousand or ten thousand milliamp hours? Was it the Lenovo P two or something or P whatever? One of one of the guys I used to work with he he bought one because he'd be able to sit and watch Netflix all day long <laughs> instead of working. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because uh, his, his battery would give up around lunchtime with the amount of Netflix he was consuming. <laughs> um, so this would be able to go for the entire but actually, day. I think it lasted him two But actually, days. as usual with these um, devices coming out of China, it's, it's very poorly specified. Helio G99 chipset and LCD display and, you know, just low-end storage and all the rest of it. So yeah. more reason why one wouldn't think that this will actually go anywhere. Um, it's called the Avenir the Energizer Avenir. <laughs> it's a big bugger, it isn't is, it? Yeah. It looks like that. It reminds me of, remember the movie Sahara? Uh, with Matthew uh, McConaughey? Uh, no. And there's a, a Civil War battleship heading down the the, um, the Mississippi or something like that. And it's, it's all made of metal and it looks a bit like this phone. Right. But the same size too. Mm. Yeah. All right, uh, the Moto G04. Well done. Okay. I couldn't work that out. I couldn't work out if it was G04 or Go4. And everywhere you see a zero or a naught, it's it's just a bit confusing. But I think you've got it right. Well, I, I was just taking it from the point of view that they're copying what Samsung does because they do their uh, their A0. Oh yeah, twenty three, yeah. and then you know they've got the one two, th- yeah. uh, the, the A, the the zero is the the really budget one, the one slightly better, and then the they, they work their way up. Yeah, they? yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. They they have used the, the zero. Okay, well, let's let's not get ahead of ourselves or anything. I'm I'm not I'm not Messiah, <laughs> a Messiah at all. It's all right. Just just relax. Yeah. It's okay. We'll just carry on with this. And and we'll examine we'll examine it later on to see whether or not it's possible that I could be a messiah because I don't make as many mistakes as other people. But this this is a this yes. is a fairly low end um, Motorola phone, but it's eighty nine quid, and you know that's really good. It's got uh, well the base model's got four gigs of RAM, but a Unisoc T six o six. Now that will ring a bell because we know that that was the chipset that was in the Nokia T ten. In fact, it might have been in the Nokia T twenty as well, the tablet. Um, but it has got a big battery on it, five thousand milliamp hours. It's got a seven twenty p. Um, six and a half inch screen which is going to be you know low resolution and lcd um it is refreshing at 90 hertz though and it has got um uh, um dolby audio now it hasn't got stereo speakers but it has got dolby audio and i think i i, I, I correct me if i'm wrong but i think that that's quite unusual that the, the the phones that tend to have dolby um, Dolby Atmos tend to be stereo phones, and this one isn't, but it's still got the Dolby Atmos, which is interesting. Um, mm. But yeah, that, it's all about price on this, and this is a phone for you know a family member, um, an elderly relative, or whatever, um, because it's just cheap and cheerful. It will never get a single update. It arrives on Android 14, thankfully, um, so yeah, at least you've got that. But it will never get another, another update. This is aimed at people that can pay, you know, 89 quid every year for a new phone. And that's what Moto do well at that bottom end, along with um, some of those Nokia models. Yeah, yeah. I, I am noticing that it's got a 16 megapixel AI-powered camera that has features like HDR and, <laughs> and portrait mode. Because <laughs> most cameras don't come with yeah. that. <laughs> um, but uh, it's got Motorola's face retouch feature uh, on the front camera, which can make uh, make you look a bit prettier whenever you're you're taking a selfie or or videoing yourself. Very exciting with the. But HD plus that's that's seven twenty, isn't it? Yeah, seven twenty. Yeah. What's HD then? Uh, Ten eighty. 
Right. And, fu- and so full HD plus full HD is, is ten, uh, f- not better than... 1440. <laughs> no, it is a 720p phone. So that, you know, as I say, you, 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 you don't want to get a magnifying glass on it. But a 720, a six and a half inch screen, it'll be fine for the target audience. Okay, all right. But it, it makes it sound like uh, HD plus is going to be slightly better than HD. Doesn't it, it is. 1440p, isn't it? I, I, no, HD plus at 16 by 6 inches HD plus display with 90 hertz refresh, which is 720. Oh, right. I don't know. I get confused with these these um, these acronyms. Absolutely, because you thought this was the Go 4 symbol. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I had to double check that because um, I thought, well, Go 4 could be the name of a phone. That sounds quite good. Like a Go Pro. <laughs> Yes, it's it's tacky, but yes, it could work. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, moving on. Uh, Microsoft's Copilot oh, uh, has a new feature that can. F- I meant to. I meant to check this before I were recording. I forgot. Well, we can skip it <sighs> until next. <sighs> Copilot. Uh, well, let me just say that I got the notebook feature working, um, <clears throat> and I meant to test it again. But I, I tried it once, and I gave Copilot a command to give me some information about something, and the ordinary Copilot tag tab. Um, gave me a better result than the notebook tab did. But if you go to Copilot now, you can find it on your Windows computer, even on Windows 10, and you'll see at the top a second tab called Notebook. And if you put the same thing in there, it's supposed to be a longer form result with a more um, padded out um, bunch of information. But in my experience, just using it quickly that once, it didn't. It was the, it was the wrong way around. Notebook was worse than the ordinary one. But yeah, I'll have a, I'll give it another go. Fair enough. Well, uh, we'll move on then. Windows 11 could soon deliver updates that don't need a Whoa. reboot. <laughs> Which I, I'm i not going to. I'm, I'm still going to reboot. <laughs> I, I would insist on doing that because... I'm doing it my no, own you, way. <laughs> well, I think they, they want to stop people rebooting their computers. I always, I've always felt that about Windows. Uh, whenever they started bringing in Hibernate mode and all that... And uh, whenever you do a shutdown now, it it's automatically defaults to not doing a full shutdown. It only does a slight shutdown that doesn't uh, restart any of the settings. So being a computer user for so many years, I know the benefits of rebooting your computer every once in a while. And I have to remind my family to do it a bit more bloody often than they do. Um, and they should be doing it. And whenever an, a new update comes along, it's like... Reboot your computer. You yeah. No excuses. They're not talking about uh, major OS updates here. They're talking about um, what they're calling hot patching, which means you know just just um, little updates that are, are, are service updates that can run in the background, a bit like Android want to do with their phones, but haven't quite got there yet because they still need rebooting. So they they've got a partition on the computer in Windows 11, which allows this to kind of read and write the data from there and, and do it on the fly, as I understand it. Um, but but yeah, this isn't for big, you know, half yearly OS updates. Yeah. Well, sometimes when I've got nothing to do, I just walk around and reboot computers. <laughs> yes. You never know what's going to happen. Something could, something interesting could happen. Oh, bugger. Has yet to happen. I've, but This something. is something else I, spe- I meant to do before we <laughs> recorded. Sticky Notes. Apparently, Sticky Notes, Microsoft Sticky Notes, is inside OneNote, isn't it? Is that right? Do, do you use Microsoft Sticky Notes? I've tried in the past. I've always wanted to. I like OneNote, um, but I just I can't bring myself to actually use it because it's so big and complicated. Right. It, it's not complicated. It's just it's it's big and complex. There's an awful lot to it, and I want to. Whenever you're sitting in front of it, you're like, oh, I like all these features, but it, it's just too ambitious for. And you realize that you're not going to use all the features because your life isn't that. Interesting. Right, here we go. What, what, one note, which one should I launch? One note or one note for Windows 10? Uh, Ooh, that's another complicated one as well. well let's, yeah. la- let's launch one note and see if I can see anywhere in here sticky notes. I expect we'll have people shouting at their, their, their speaker now saying, it's, it, it's <laughs> under that menu, for goodness sake, don't you know anything? Call yourself a tech addict. Uh, yes, we can call ourselves tech addicts. We're not calling ourselves tech experts yeah there's a difference i can't see it i can't see it readily <laughs> so that'll have to go 
Right. All oh, right. Okay. I'm just in the middle of dining. <laughs> well, one apparently, to see what the, I've got the news here. here was that um, that they, they they they've updated sticky notes and um, uh, what what features have they added? Oh, I, should, I really no. That's where they have to install Office. No. Oh, oh my no. Word. Ooh. Um, the update adds a new and modern appeal to the platform, as well as a neat feature that lets you find the original source of your screenshots easily. Is this tied up with Snip and What's It, then? With screenshots? Anyway, the new Sticky Note app is currently in preview, so it may not be available for anyone immediately. That's probably why I couldn't find it in OneNote, then. Good grief. Who edits the articles for this recording show? Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've opened Microsoft Store. I'm going to have a look for Sticky Notes app in there. That's where it would be, wouldn't it? Uh, well, apparently it's part of OneNote, so I read. It's not a standalone thing, but I don't know. I, I, do, I, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, right, okay. Apparently it's already installed, although I did do a search down in the search bar for Sticky Notes and nothing came up. But uh, Microsoft Store says it's already installed. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah, not I've installing got it. OneNote. I, oh, yeah, my, my list of things says, oh, look, get started. <laughs> Back up your notes and sync across devices. Simply sign in. Get started. Yeah, my sticky notes is working. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, I've and I've used it. Well. So have I. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, got three it is part of, I think it is part of um, part of OneNote because it's referencing num- OneNote in there. Anyway, that's something else for, for the next show, probably, for us to learn how to use OneNote and then realise that we use Google Keep and can't be asked. Yeah, I think Google Keep just is simpler. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and, and you probably need to, it'll probably try to get you to use all the other Microsoft serv- uh, services that you're trying to avoid. Yeah, uh, I don't even have Office installed on this at all. And also, um, if you're already using Keep, it's accessible across all devices. Whereas that sticky note thing looks like it's Windows only. I did see a, an article this week in one of the tech thingies that said that um, my, that um, Google are working on bringing a um, a, a, a Windows desktop um, notepad thingy sticky, a bit like that. Maybe they're they're going after Microsoft sticky note thingy. Um, which means that you'll be able to put a keep note on your Windows desktop, but that's not not rolled out yet. Yeah, I, I always thought that they should at least have that in Chrome. It would be great to be able to open up them, you know, a new browser page where you've got your Google and your Google search bar and, and your shortcuts and have a wee sticky note somewhere else in the white to remind you to do something. Um, you know, and, and you can maybe send it from your phone. That'd be class. Yeah, yeah. So whenever you sit down at your desktop computer, it's like, oh, I have to remember to go and pay my council tax or something like that. And there could be a sticky note there to remind you to do Indeed. that. Indeed. I know there's Google Tasks and Google Assistant, but that doesn't throw itself at you. You have to go and actively find those things yeah. uh, in order to remember to do I it. I do agree. Um, but, yeah, they were, yeah, apparently they're working on that. All right. Well, let's let them work on that and we'll be quiet. Mm. Tell us what else Google's been working on in the Google Gallows and Chrome Corners. Actually. They have. Um, you didn't. Uh, you acknowledge the fact that you've got no name of the game. Have you not been playing games this week? No, I've been sick all That's week. True, yeah. Right. Okay. Google Gallows then is um, a few things. Gemma has been announced, um, which is an, um, a, a model for AI research people. So it's, it's not. It's, it's not for consumers. It's for people that are developing AI models. And they Google have um, offshooted, forked off a version of what they're doing with Gemini, and it's called Gemma. And people can currently already download that if they're a developer and start to work with the code to make AI work for them and their whatever they're developing. Um, Google designers explained why Chromebooks have got lowercase letters on the keys. Have you ever wondered why you've got lowercase and not uppercase like every other keyboard in the world? Uh, no, no, my um, there was a computer that I had that had lowercase. Was there? What well, apples? I don't apples have lowercase? No, I don't think so. Anyway, um, they decide, these people said that they wanted to do this to make it more accessible because most of the time, you know, friendly and, and chilled out and not stuffy and formal. And most of the time that you're using your keys, you're only, except for the first initial 
capital letter of your sentence, normally, you, most of the time you're using it, you are um, hitting keys to get lowercase characters. And so why yeah. not have it lowercase? Anyway, that was what they were explaining. Um, Google Chrome will soon protect your home network event against cyber attacks. That's their uh, moving forward to try and um, get um, the same kind of thing going as Samsung have got, I think, which is to, on the fly, intercept whatever website you're going to, hopefully without slowing everything down, and, and looking at the website and flagging it up to say to you, are you sure you want to be going there? I mean, to some degree, that already exists, but they've, they've now put a, um, a kind of badge on it and they're, 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 they're working on something more official. Um, you can also now mark up... Now, live on air demonstration, you can mark up your Google Docs with handwritten <laughs> notes. And I've got in my hand now a pen uh, an s pen and on my fold five i've got this open and the, at the at the top of google docs now there's a little pen icon and you can then use your pen and it's really flaky because half the time you you start writing something and it as you can see just there there's a stroke that's come in on the so this is it, this is all collaborated in real time but like I say, ah, it's now closed the document. It, it, it's actually not working very well. Um, you don't say. But the, the, the principle is there. If I can just go back down there one time more. So what you could do is you can end up drawing a picture of a phallic symbol and then closing out of the document accidentally and all your colleagues see that. Yeah, you see, it keeps shutting the, the app down. Now, maybe that's a Samsung thing. Um and if it was not Samsung, apparently it works with a a finger as well. But when I, we well, yeah, when when I draw something, as you can see, what I'm doing there, it, when you draw something, when you remove the pen off the screen, it seems to stop drawing it. Now I've not tried this with a, a, a Samsung Galaxy tablet, but this is with the Fold Five, and it just seems really flaky. But yes, you can you, you can. If you're collaborating on a document on a Google Doc with other people, you can now kind of draw um, diagrams and, and uh, you know, when, it, when it's working properly, it might be quite useful for some people. Um, and also, lastly, for accessibility people, people that need accessibility, um, the Chromebook feature is coming along soon, which will allow mouse movement instead of um, using a mouse. You can do it with the keyboard keys, which you think would be quite obvious. It should have been done decades ago, but apparently it's not. So on a Chromebook, um, if you want to move the mouse cursor up, or down or sideways, you can you can control that with the cursor keys on a on a on on the keyboard of the Chromebook. So that was my roundup. Anything you want to talk about? Uh, I'm just I'm having to go with my Samsung Galaxy tablet here to see if I can draw some boobies beside your phallic ah. symbol. <coughs> that's a good idea. Let's see in live time. No, no, that's it's it's putting a couple of M's at the bottom at the bottom of the the. The document at the bottom of the document. I don't. Or the top of the, the top document, of the right? document. Yeah. The, the other oh yeah, one. but that's just yeah. typed M's. It's not handwritten. No, it's not. It didn't but you can see when we were time. playing with this earlier, you can still see up there that I successfully wrote the word hello. So I, I think yes. I think the building blocks are all in there, but it's just not quite working properly yet. No, but maybe one day it Indeed. might. And it'll be a day to look forward to, and then we'll have forgotten about it the day after. <laughs> when when we realise that we don't ever use it anyway. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, you've got a keyboard on mice, so why would you want to... What, what happens if you press the pen thing? Oh, that's a highlight colour. So it's not on Windows, it's only on Android. Right, carry on. Okie dokie. Uh, well, we're going to go into the hark back, because I think we talked, we mentioned at least the brand on the last show. What What I brand? Think. I really Oh did. yeah, so we did. Good memories. And I went on a wee crusade and I did I successfully managed to find my quick start guide for the iRiver PMP one hundred series. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, because I used to have one of these and I almost loved it. Oh. I didn't love it, but I almost loved it. And I remember actually I sold it on eBay to a guy who was going off to work uh, 
on a Navy frigate somewhere. And he it, it was the 30 gigabyte one or 40 gigabyte one I had. And he wanted to fill it full of movies to keep himself entertained whilst he was away off. I, for some reason, I imagined him in the Falklands, but I don't know why I imagined that. Just, I'm on a ship away out there. Um, this was a little personal media player. They made two types. There was the, the PMC, which was the portable media center. And then there was the PMP, which is the personal media player. The PMC was slightly different. Uh, they, they're, they're, they're pretty much built around the same architecture, but the PMC had a, a, a different uh, uh, button layout and screen setup and things like that. And it was it was built, baked into Windows Media Center edition. And it was crap. Uh, but the PMP was a Linux-based uh, portable media player that would allow you to be able to play back and listen to music on the go. And it was a wee dinky little thing. It was maybe about five inches across, if anything. And it had uh, controllers down the left side and the right side and really comfortable hand grips as well. A kick out kick out stand so that it could stand in front of you and you'd be able to watch your videos on the go. The problem with it was that uh, the operating system that was running on it was just not easy to use. It was a real pain in the ass. It was overly ambitious. It had lots of exciting little features built into it uh, that were really difficult to get to. And you had to use button combinations to do stuff. You know, um, even having a look in the quick start guide, uh, there's an entire page dedicated to what things do like uh you, you you long click the power on button to turn it on that's about the only standard thing that you do you select files with a d-pad and then to add files you uh, use the d-pad as well and then hold down a particular button on the right side to bring up another menu to be able to cut and paste and then you have to close that menu with another button altogether not the same button that you use to open it up with and then you can move somewhere else if you need to say move a video from one folder to another uh, it would involve something like 76 clicks of different buttons <laughs> around the outside i hated having to do stuff on it um but it had a really cool feature set built into it as well. There was an FM radio. It could play back various media types. And I think, I don't remember very well, but I think you could actually uh, add in extra codecs or else you had to convert everything to a really complicated codec or a really crappy codec like WMV or something like that. Or w, or, yeah, um, it would pay back existing videos except for mpeg2 and wmv files okay so it could play back anything but mpg or, or wmv so you had to convert everything to avi or mpeg4 and mpeg4 was quite early on at this stage it supported divx and xvid and a few other things i'm not going to get into the whole sort of ins and outs of what it could do and what it couldn't do whenever it came to codecs but nine times out of ten you'd put a video on and it wouldn't work as well and then you need to take it off and try and re-encode it into something else whilst keeping as much quality as possible because i think it would pay back 320 by 240 that might have been the, the maximum resolution of the screen it wasn't a great screen and uh, seeing your your uh photographs and things on there it it was more the novelty of being able to take it with you and i think it was my first portable media player that i could do but it had a function that allowed you to be able to take a cable with you and hook it up to other people's um uh, portable media players not just by iriver but other other uh media players maybe by creative zen or by arcos or something like that and you could actually rip some of their media over to yours as well so you could share media to other people with it too which is really nice and you could copy across files that weren't compatible with the system and then be able to take them home convert them on your computer at home and then play them back again i just remember being so in love with it and it came with a great uh uh, uh case that are sort of reinforced rugged almost cardboard plasticky case uh, that the the handset would settle into really nicely um, and it had a, a strap as well so you wouldn't drop it too easily um, and it, you could replace the battery too you could buy second batteries because I still have a battery 
and all of the bits and pieces that I forgot to send to the fella who who bought it off me. Um, and there's yeah, there, there was iRiver Media Converter software as well that you could download from iRiver's website. Um, video. Ah, oh, there we go. Um, so DivX five point X maximum resolution was six forty by four eighty. And then DivX 3.11 maximum resolution was 352 by 240. And uh, 30 frames per second was the maximum video frame rate as well. And it would only support AVI, ASF, and MPEG 1 files. Although it did MPEG 4 and ISO. So it did support a lot more. Right, okay. But yeah, um, I loved this. It was great. It was 30 gigabytes that I could take with me. Um, there was a 20 gigabyte version as well. They had said that you would be able to play games on it too. Um, and there was a, I think there was a section where you could click games, but they never actually released any. But because it had that D-pad and extra buttons and stuff like that, they, they just sort of maximized what they could put into it. Um, and, and, and had this taken off and become the new iPod, then they would have started developing games. Do you ever hear of these? Have you no, ever had one or played with the, them? The iRiver units that I've had were all MP3 players. Um, I think I might have had one that had a, um, a a useful screen approaching the kind that you're showing with this device, but certainly not as sophisticated or certainly not as, as far forward as this. It was much more about just playing audio files and not video files. So this is the, this one is in no way connected to anything. Anything you put onto it, you need to put onto a, a cable or a card, do you? And Well, no, you put it into the, the hard disk itself. Yeah, but, you, but it, there's no Wi-Fi or anything. It's too early for that. No, no, no one is. Yeah, yeah, so, so you, you would need to cable it up or card it or whatever, and then transfer the files manually. Yeah, and that, yeah. and that was the same with my iRiver devices. I can't remember of an era. Did you say when about this was? Um, oh, yeah. Um, oh, two thousand and four. Well, this 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 I'm review, like the that, review yeah. you've linked to, is two thousand and four. Um, so yeah, yeah. It it had actually now I think about it it had a TV out, and I remember the I find a movie called it's a it's a notorious movie called Turkish Star Wars. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever you ever heard of it, but it, it's yeah. uh, it's it's a phenomenal film to watch. It really is. And I remember my my parents. I was living at home. I I think I must have come home off ships working on cruise ships for a while, and my parents had gone away on holiday, and I had some of the boys around. And uh, we sat down and we watched Turkish Turkish Star Wars on this, but I hooked it up to the TV, and I think it was the only time I ever right. successfully used the video out function, and it looked awful on on <laughs> three, my parents' three TV. Three twenty by two forty. <laughs> yeah, but it was a VHS rip, so you kind of expect, you know, it was a ninth generation VHS with terrible audio, and we were just suffering through the whole thing. But because the film was so poor. Uh, you you didn't really notice it being yeah. so But yeah, it was it was They were good devices. It, it was yeah. a great device. I, I liked I it. I think yeah. the I River stuff was actually it was at the time it was really well thought of and you know, when you went to buy an MP three player, um the, you know, they were up there and they were spoken about with very glowing terms. Um so yeah, and this one obviously is a bit more advanced to the ones that I've been uh, that I had been using. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I loved iRiver, and I was really excited about them doing a a newer version of this. Um, but I don't think they ever did. They they launched a, another video player, which wasn't anywhere near as you know um, of the complete package as this. It was it was some sort of strange other device that they put out. And given that they they've done the PAP, PMP and then the P the the, the personal media center version. Um, I'd seen an awful lot of reviews of the personal media center version. It seemed to be the popular one, but I had absolutely no interest in that at all because I hated media center edition of Windows. I'd used it once for about, I don't know, three months or something and thought, what am I doing with this lump of nonsense on the computer and got rid of it and put Vista back on or Windows ME or something like that. Some tragedy. But yeah. Windows ME. There's one, there's one in the heart back. 
<laughs> yeah, I remember having Windows ME on a laptop and I took it into... The, the, the laptop was acting really badly. I was in Honolulu and I took it into Comp USA and I said, I'm, I'm, I'm coming back. I'll, I'll be back this way in about five or six days' time. Can you sort out my laptop and fix it? Uh, and I'll pick it up on the way back. And the guy was like, oh, ugh, it's Emmy. Ugh, ugh. <laughs> I don't know. Um, possibly. Um, I don't know if I want to touch that. I was like, well, can you do something else? Like, stick. I'll put Windows 2000 on it. Like, oh, okay, do that. Yeah. Do well. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Well, that about takes us into the bargain basement. Indeed. Where there's a couple of exciting things. The first one is um, that dinky little Motion X500 sound core speaker, which came out a little while ago. Um, and this is the lowest price I've seen it so far. It started off at 169 quid. It's now 119 quid. And this is the little brother of the X600, which I've got here. Um, that that's the one with the kind of you know 3D sound or whatever it's called. Um, and um, yeah, that, that if I, uh, an X five hundred, I wish I knew what. Well, I wish I needed one. Very very nice, and the cheapest price so far. Okay, um, I, I have a wee one here, uh, which is um, by Anchor. Uh, it's the USB C hub. This is uh, the six five five. The website isn't opening for me for some reason. Why is it not opening? Amazon's not opening oh, for yeah, me. Yeah, nor is it for me. Oh dear, Amazon Ooh, is down. You heard it here first <laughs> on Tech Addicts. Amazon. You'll hear it in four hours whenever I eventually get it. Out. <laughs> there it is now. It's working now. Uh, the Anchor USB Type C Hub, the 655 USB C Hub, 8 in 1. This is gorgeous. This looks like an old uh, portable camera of some oh, description. Yeah. Um, it's uh, got two USB-A 10 gigabit per second data uh, data ports, 100 watt power delivery, 4K HDMI, one gigabyte Ethernet, and a micro SD card and a regular SD card, plus a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary, and it works on the MacBook. Um, it's <laughs> it's for <laughs> MacBook, nothing else, only for MacBook. Uh, well, I think the white one was for Mac because it kind of matches. <laughs> Amazon tell you, you if you've got anything about from a MacBook, you can't use it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a it's a lovely looking uh, USB hub, and the one thing I really like about it, and I don't think they sell it um, as a, as a feature, is that the USB Type C that plugs into the side of your laptop is at a right angle. Oh yeah, so it is. That's beautiful. Is that leather, or is it? It's some sort of material. Yeah, it's like it? a faux leather. Yeah, yeah. it mm -hmm. is nice. You're right. But it's it's down in price from eighty quid to thirty one ninety nine. I thought it was lower than that. Have I put anything else in it? No, it was twenty five quid earlier, but now it's thirty one ninety nine. Oh, it's gone up in price a little All bit. Right. Why? Still. Yeah, the reason they put MacBook in there is because since MacBooks have got USB C on board, that was the that's why they're doing it, isn't it? Anyway, mm. um, yeah. yeah, very yeah. nice little bargain that looks. Thirty two quid um, instead of twenty five quid. <laughs> right, um, U Green is next, and this is the USB C um, charger thingy. Oh, hang on a minute, we did this last week, didn't we? I think you posted this in the MeWe group as well. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah all right. I bought the hundred watt um, USB. Um, um, what's it? A Gan charger, which I bought, and everyone else has bought, apart from you listening to this, <laughs> um, is down to thirty seven pound ninety eight. And yes, you're quite right. That's why I remembered it because I posted it in the group as a bargain basement. Thirty seven ninety eight, thirty seven percent off. Should be 60 quid. Well, actually, when I bought mine, it was 82 quid, I think. Or it, or it should have been. It was yeah, it went down to 60-something. But anyway, um, that is such a serious bargain. These are great devices. Go and buy one. I got mine for 58 pounds, right. according to whenever I ordered it in 20th of May, 2023. Mm. Yeah, they're, they're terrific. Goes with me whenever I go on holiday. Mm. It, it sits 
in the wall beside me most of the time charging my little tablet here, my Chromebook. Uh, but otherwise it'll be ripped out of the wall and taken with me with a couple of superior USB Type-C cables anytime I go away because they're great. Yes, indeed. Um, I have a f- similar type thing. Uh, this is a USB Type-C plug uh, by Anchor again. It's a 67 watt charger. It's compact, foldable, fast charging for MacBook, <laughs> uh, iPhone, <laughs> iPad, Galaxy, Pixel, oh, Air. Ga- oh, 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 oh Galaxy. It's not Apple. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pixels in there too um yeah it's it's just a it's a plug that charges it's only got one usb type c charging point in it but uh it's only 20 quid it's down from 30 quid to 20 quid but get this there's an additional 10 percent off voucher mm-hmm. which you can redeem and that'll bring the price down even lower to 17.99 mm-hmm. ain't that a bargain um, I tell you what I like about this, though. You were talking about travelling there. Is that those pins? Um, as you said, it was folding. The, the bit about it that folds is that the pins fold into the unit. That's really good, and I, I think we should see mm. more of that um, because you know if you're travelling and you're putting it in a bag, the the three pin system for the UK is a bit of a pain in the ass, frankly, when you're travelling, um, and that just tucks it all away. That's really nice. Well, what you could do if you don't have a, a folding pins is you could take a block of cheddar with you, and if you push the plug <laughs> into the cheddar, uh, it'll protect the pins. Yes, thank you. Carry on. Oh no, it's me, isn't it? I think it's um, your turn. Right, the next one is a get the, a gaming headset, which I happen to notice has been reduced from 175 quid to 112 quid. This is the Steel series, which I've never heard of, um, but it does. I have a have set. You? Well, it. The, Oh, no, I've got a keyboard steel here. OK. Well, apparently, I mean, it seems to review really well with tons and 35,000 ratings and everyone saying how good it is. 30-hour um, battery life, and it's kind of geared up for gaming with a kind of pull-out microphone and, and all the gubbins that gamers want, I guess. Um, so, yeah, what, what have you got, a keyboard? Yeah, my son has a Steel Series keyboard that he uses. It, it's really mm-hmm. nice. Uh, it's nicely built. I... I have high stock in um, Steel Series, right. one of the better gaming. I've never brands. heard of it until this yeah. week. Um, but that does look that, that these this headset does look nice if one was into gaming. Hmm. Yeah, the the wee microphone thing looks really cute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wonder you do you pull it yeah. out or you yeah. do it pulls. Ooh, that's sexy. Hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ninety nine point. Ooh. Right, okay, well, we'll move on before I start incriminating myself. Um, Something different, something a wee bit different. And this is the number one bestseller on Amazon. Has been reduced from £200 to £160. And this is the Ninja Creamy, C-R-E-A-M-I. This is an ice cream maker and frozen dessert maker. It comes with three tubs. Uh, seven programs makes ice cream, gelato, sorbet, smoothie bowl, milkshakes, and more. And it's compatible with MacBook. It makes a one point four liters of ice cream, and it looks pretty cool. I think I would quite like one of these, but I just thought it was something a wee bit different that was a bit better value for money. Mm. My sister testing the My waters. sister may used to make ice cream. And she concluded yeah. that if you're going to make um, nice ice cream that you really want to value over going and buying some from a shop, it's really, really expensive to make your own. It's also really, really fattening. Well, the, I, I, that depends on what you put in it, of course. But basically, she was saying most of it, if you want it nice, it's going to be like double cream. And this is this uh. is not the kind of thing to get if you're a recently diagnosed type 2 diabetic. <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, for everyone else, um, I'm sure it'll be really nice. And she she just basically said it's 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 ever so nice, but it's just really expensive and a real fiddle to make. Now this ninja machine might make it not a real fiddle to make. Um, I grant you. Um, and it, yeah, it would be great fun for the right person, uh, a kind of Christmas present for someone who's got everything. Well, the one thing I will say about this is that it has a good sales pitch in that it's easy to clean because everything can be thrown into the dishwasher. Mm-hmm. Great. There's nothing worse than yeah. not having 
<laughs> I mean, something that doesn't I can, I can vouch working. for the Ninja brand, though, because I've got a Ninja soup maker, which I've banged on about in the Whatever Works podcast, and it's superb. It's absolutely brilliant. It's not, Yay, it's not, not, nice not cheap, not cheap, but it really is very good. Sorry? So it's kind of the opposite to this. <laughs> yeah. So the, the healthy versus the unhealthy. But yeah, everyone loves okay. ice cream, no, don't they? They do, they do. And I was looking to see if maybe they did sort of six months worth, but no. No, no they don't. Um, oh, yes, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm being offered £32 for five months. Oh. Ha! Damn it. Yes. That's not fair. <laughs> right into my MP. So, what's next? The, la- yeah, the one last more. one is a Sabri... No, hang on a minute. Sabrent. Sabrent. Another brand I've never heard of. Powered USB hub, um, which has got um, seven USB-A ports with a little light next to each of them to say if you're using it or not. And a little button to power each one on and off individually. Really nice. Um, so it's, it's basically a USB hub switch thingy, which you can plug loads of USB. I remember Aidan Bell was after one of these a while ago. He got one. I think it had more ports than this one. But I quite like the fact that each one can be individually controlled with a switch. And it's got its own you know, power up and, and, and so forth. Plug it into your computer. And your, is it a USB-C? To, into your computer? No, I bet it's a USB-A, isn't it? No, yeah. it's... So you, uh, yeah, it's the yeah, big yeah. one. So um, there you go, and of course it's compatible with a MacBook and an iMac. <laughs> See the one thing about actually, I'm I'm having a quick look here. One of the reviewers has it sort of plugged in, and and all the the cables and things coming out of it, because I'm interested in the switches. Now, I I have a USB hub there that has one button for the whole right. thing. But whenever I, when it, say the power goes out, um, I have to manually come up and press that button. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, to turn everything yeah. on that's plugged into it, which is real pain mm-hmm. in the arse. I used to have a bunch of hard drives and things uh, plugged into it, which, you know, it sort of defeated the purpose. Whenever your computer came back on again, the hard drives would be sitting yeah. off. So if you have media stored on them, you can't access them and stuff like that. And I was, I've, I've been always been looking one for, you know, like a, like a, a an on off switch yep. so that whenever you, your power turns back on again, it automatically turns yep. on. But I don't think this has that from the look of those buttons, they'll all be off after a power cut and you have to go back over and press each and every one of them. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, that's not clear, is it? They could be bounce in, bounce out ones. If they're bounce in, bounce out ones, then they'll, they will stay on, but Oh, no, I, I stand corrected. I've just noticed one of the pictures has the button is pressed down and is ah, in. Then it will stay on. Right. Okie dokie. Uh, add the basket. <laughs> Ordered. Ah, right. Okay, then. So, anyway, that's been reduced from um, 31 quid to 19 quid at the moment. So... That's a bit of a bargain in our bargain basement. True, yes. I think there's a smaller one as well. I think there's a three-port one I noticed uh, on sale too. Yeah. Yes, there is. Mm. There's a... Or no, it's four ports. Um, and it's down to 849 as well. Plus it's got an extra 10% off. Mm, there's, mm. A, there's a 10 one as well. 10, 7 plus 3. What's the 3? Char- three charging ports. Oh, okay. So that just passed through power. 36 watts, it passes through power. Divide that by three, and you've got 12 on each. See how I worked that out? That's, that's okay. amazing. You know, Carol Vorderman <laughs> be out of the job. Richard Whiteley, or whatever his name is, can, be, can, can take a hike. <laughs> right, okay. Well, if you want to get in touch with us, you can by emailing us at gareth at techaddicts.uk. You can find me on Twitter at Gareth Miles, G A R E T H M Y L E S. I also have Mastodon, and I have my GarethMiles.com where you can find out all about me. And I didn't put anything about my sickness up there, but uh, maybe I'll. No, no, no. 
oh, it's not worth it. Mm. Pictures of my loogies and stuff like that. Ew. Oh, nice. uh, Ted, where can they find um, you? TedSalmon.com, as usual. That's where I am. I'm on Mastodon, too. I was looking at it again this week, so I kind of dabbled about with that now and again. PayPal.me forward slash Ted Salmon is where you can buy me a copy, and I thank you in advance. And that's about it, really. Hopefully, by the time we come back and record in two weeks' time, we'll both be fitter and more healthy. Tickety boo, I believe yeah. the phrase is. Medical term. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, um, have a wonderful fortnight. Um, don't do anything we wouldn't do. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Like a good podcast or something like that. <laughs> um, other than that, take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs>